I would like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon today and pay my respects to the elders, both past, present and future, for they hold the memories, culture, tradition and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that contribute to our community. Thank you. I must advise you that this council meeting is being webcast and recorded. By speaking at the council meeting, you agree to being recorded and webcast. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this council meeting that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Conflict of interest declarations, I've received none. Uh, Mr Zaknich. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. The advice to the council meeting relates to the disclosures of political donations and requirements of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. The Act under section 147 requires a person submitting planning applications or submissions regarding a planning application to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of council. Reportable political donations include those of or above $1,000. The disclosure statement forms are available on Council's website or from the Customer Service Centre and must be lodged in accordance with the Act. The forms are also available at the back of the Chamber during meetings. In dealing with development applications, councillors need to take into account specific matters contained in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Accordingly, the provisions of Section 79C1 of that Act are set out in the Council Officer's Report, detailing issues to be considered. The Local Government Act 1993, Section 375A requires that a division be called whenever a motion for a planning decision is put at a meeting of the Council. Planning decision means a decision made in the exercise of a function of Council under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, including a decision to relating to a development application and environmental planning instrument a development control plan or a development contribution plan under that Act, but not including the making of an order under Division 2A of Part 6 of that Act. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Zaknich. Uh, apologies. Thanks, Councillors. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you to move the apologies of Councillors Con, Doxy and King and grant leave of absence for this meeting. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. I second the motion. Uh, Thank you. Happy to move that motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. There is no mayoral minute. Action plans CM 6.1 to 6.4. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Vanderman. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Happy to move that the following action plans be received and noted. 6.1 actions complete for noting only 6.3 actions in progress and 6.4 long-term issues more than three months. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Vanderman, do you wish to speak to that at all? Uh, no, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. CM7, confirmation minutes of previous meeting held on Monday the 25th of June at 6pm. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Stutchbury. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that um, we uh, accept that the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday 25th of June 2018 at 6pm be confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Stutchby, do you wish to speak to them at all? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. On that note, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. There are no notices of motion. CM10, no presentation of deputations. CM11, reports, minutes of committees and working parties. CM11.1, sustainability advisory committee meeting minutes. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move the minutes and recommendations of the Sustainability Advisory Committee meeting held on Tuesday 29th of May 2018 be received, noted and accepted. Thank you. Councillor Glacken. Oh, happy to second that. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, just to speak to that? Uh, just to note that uh, once again it has a strong community involvement and uh, at every meeting there's uh, strong input from the community members of this committee and that's, in my opinion, an extremely helpful committee to the city and it's it plans for sustainability issues. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, through you to the most relevant <coughs> member of staff. I read the, with interest in the report discussions about uh, corridors uh, linking um, uh, various uh, geographical zones in our community. And I 
looked a little further into it and had a look at the Office of Environment and Heritage tree mapping website, which is very interesting, and I commend the website to all fellow councillors. I was wondering, Mr Mayor, if uh, through you to the most relevant member of staff, we here in Albury City have in fact mapped out or planned for future corridors uh, linking various environment, environmental areas. Mr Keyes. Through you, Mr Mayor, um, certainly the, the current LEP identifies key corridors through our area which were picked up and identified uh, work done by the Albury Wodonga Development Corporation back in the early 2000s, which include the Albury uh, Ranges Threatened Species Strategy and the Thaguna Threatened Species Strategy. Both of those show extent, have done extensive work looking at the threatened species across the region and how those corridors can support uh, and encourage and proliferate those species uh, in the local area. And the LEP, particularly through the provisions around the environmental zones, uh, has specifically picked up on those, tried to reinforce, uh, encourage and protect those corridors. Uh, there are other avenues, that, including a current review of the environmental lands that we're looking at at the moment in conjunction with OEH that will also look to try and promote that, uh, those aspects as well. Are you happy uh, with that? Just to follow up, please, yep. Mr Mayor, thank you for that uh, answer, Mr Keyes. Just to follow up, looking at the tree mapping, uh, I note that many of the trees mapped are on private property and I assume that Many of the trees are also on lands probably uh, earmarked for future residential development. Is there a strategy in place to uh, protect uh, uh, trees which are, or clumps of trees which are considered of significance uh, in the development of these corridors? Mr Keyes. Through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, trees or, or habitat uh, specifically it was identified as being of significance, as being essentially protected and identified in those strategies that I mentioned before. And uh, typically they're identified in either private or publicly owned environmental lands. Uh, and so the protection should be in place for those. There have been some recent changes through the biodiversity reforms that council's still working in conjunction with OEH, uh, in particular around rural lands, so non-residential, non-urban areas. Uh, also the areas of future development land that's been specifically identified for future development uh, has been biocertified by the New South Wales Government and that area has been uh, offset and protections provided for environmental offsets in, in these environmental corridors. Councillor Stashman. Thank you, Mr Keyes, Mr Mayor. Thank you. On that note, I'm happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. Documents for sealing, none, none, to be, none to be seen. CM13 officers reports for consideration. CM13.1 report ting serious wrongdoing, public interest disclosure policy and procedure. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that A, Council receive a note the report and B, adopt the draft reporting a serious wrongdoing, public interest disclosure policy and procedure. Thank you. Councillor Glycken. Uh, thank you. Happy to second. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, do you have to speak to that? Uh, just to note that this is really a very important policy for Council. Um, over the last few years and since my time on Council, there have been some major uh, corruption issues in other Councils. Uh, significant problems uh, continue in, in various Councils. And it's uh, good that we've adopted this public policy. Um, we're prepared to say to people, if you think there's something wrong, talk about it uh, and tell us because we'll fix it. And uh, the, the, the perception of the public in too many cases is that things get hidden and this is great that our council puts, puts it out front. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. On that note, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. 13.2 refurbishment of the heating system at the Lauren Jackson Sports Centre. Councillor Stutchbury. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I am prepared to move this with an amendment and I'm wondering if Maria could put that up for us. <coughs> yep. There you go. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I move that Council A accept the tender provided by Ozilek Heat and Coolit for contract number 18 
slash 01246 for the refurbishment of the heating system at the Lauren Jackson Sports Centre for the lump sum of $198,952.36, including GST, and B, investigate the feasibility of the future installation of a high-efficiency solar thermal desk and air conditioning system similar to that installed at the Stockland Shopping Centre in Wendery, Victoria, in suitable council-owned buildings. Thank you. Councillor Thurley? Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Sussby, do you wish to speak to that? Yes, Mr Mayor, I would. Uh, first of all, in regards to the tender provided by Ozilek, uh, this is clearly a good tender uh, and also the only tender, but luckily it was a good tender. It, uh, this company has done work for Albury City in the past uh, to a good standard and the tender has come in under our allocated budget and so therefore there will be no reason to um, knock it back. Uh, however, whilst reading through the documents, I couldn't help thinking to myself, gosh, the Lauren Jackson Sporting Centre heated with natural gas. I'd really hate to pay for that gas bill. And then I thought, ooh, actually I am paying for that gas <laughs> bill, as, as are the rest of us. Um, Gas supplies in Australia have uh, been in the headlines in the last 12 months. Um, they would appear to be uh, a, a bit variable in terms of um, guaranteed supply and there's no doubt the prices have gone up. So although this is a good tender uh, and will do the job for now, I've got serious concerns about both the cost of heating such a volume uh, with gas and also there is the environmental aspects of it. There are other options at the moment. They're not so much experimental, but perhaps uh, in the early stages of development. But you can, believe it or not, cool down a building with the heat of the sun. Uh, and furthermore, you can also heat a building with the heat of the sun in the middle of winter. Uh, and these systems, are, well, there's one that's been placed at that shopping centre in um, Wendery, which for those of you who have never lived in Victoria is a little bit of Ballarat. And uh, I think that given that we've got some big uh, buildings uh, in this um, council and we've got some big uh, heating bills and cooling bills coming up in the future, I think we should be looking at alternatives and a solar uh, system that both heats and cools uh, may well pay for itself because it certainly will be more expensive than the standard, but I am confident that it will pay for itself down the track and uh, I think that it's worthwhile investigating. So I would uh, commend uh, this amendment to my fellow councillors. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. Uh, no speakers against, but two speakers for. Councillor Thurley. I, I really would like to support this uh, um, motion. The, obviously, the tender is a conforming tender, a very good tender, came in under budget. Uh, but for the long-term sustainability, uh, investigation of alternatives such as the one that Councillor Stutchbury has flagged here is critical. Gas supply and gas prices are, have always been in the news now for several years. Um, even if we don't consider the fact that they are fossil fuels um, and they have an effect, a uh, greenhouse effect in themselves. The, the option to get into this type of uh, development, and it may not be the only one that Council comes up with in an investigation, but this is uh, early days and it's um, but it's not unproven technology. So it's a great opportunity to get in, partner with the people who are developing this and probably get a good deal if we can come up with some uh, options for use in our buildings throughout the city. So I commend the second part of this motion, especially that we carry out an investigation into the feasibility of this uh, high-efficiency high solar thermal technology. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Vanderman, speaker for. Um, uh, ditto. Um, and, and only from the perspective that we have to look at these uh, options for 
the uh, future of our energy uh, consumption, both uh, uh, as a an organisation that leads the way in Albury Wodonga, uh, as far as um, you know sustainability is concerned, uh, but just for the future of our city uh, in uh, trying to drive down the costs of uh, you know running everything, making sure that um, you know they're, they're uh, climate controlled and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg and it doesn't contribute to uh, global warming as far as we can. Now there are some uh, obviously. There's a, they've learned a lot from these projects, from what I read in the documentation, and there's still a lot to learn. But I think we need to start that uh, conversation with the people that are um, putting these uh, sorts of systems in place to, to make sure that, uh, you know, when it becomes commercially available, uh, on a, uh, that, that we're at the forefront and we design our council buildings to be able to um, uh, to take advantage of these opportunities uh, because, as I said, the, um, there were some issues around the first building um, that needed to make sure that it could hold the systems and all that sort of stuff. So we just need to make sure that what we need to do in the future is done in our building design and then just have the conversation to make sure that we're at the forefront of this sort of technology. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Vanderman. Councillor Stutbury, there are no more speakers for or against the Jewish to close debate. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just very briefly uh, to echo uh, Councillor Van Der Veen, uh, ditto. Uh, leadership is what's required here. Uh, we uh, should be seen to be doing what we can to both help the environment and drive down costs and leadership uh, is what we could be displaying uh, in, this, uh, in this area. Thank you. Thank you. On that note, I'm happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion's carried. CM 13.3. Thank you, councillors. I'll leave this to someone to read out. Councillor Vanderman. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll move the recommendations of motion that Council A receive and note the contents of this report and B <laughs> grant consent to development application 10.2018.35932.14 the erection of a second dwelling, garage and studio decorated detached dual occupancy, a boundary adjustment between 656 Pemina Street and 557 Thaguna Street, Albury, consolidation of three allotments at 557 Thaguna Street and subdivision of the dual occupancy to create two lots, each containing a dwelling subject to the conditions contained in the draft determination included in this report as attachment four to this report. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Vanderman, do you wish to... Uh, briefly, Mr Mayor, this uh, uh, particular block um, in at the corner of uh, Thaguna and Pemberton has seen has been a, uh, an eyesore for uh, over 10 years and it's great to see somebody uh, uh, making uh, uh, something uh, of that, what, what is a piece of prime real estate, uh, real estate in, uh, in Albury and, and uh, from what I see of the plans for the buildings, I think they will quite nicely fit into that... Uh, that area, uh, so um, I, I don't have any issues with this. Obviously, the, the biggest issue might have been some contamination issues, but they appear to have been uh, addressed uh, in all the uh, investigations that have been done. So no issues as far as I'm concerned with this particular uh, development. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you. And no questions or further debate. To just one Probably a couple of questions probably to Mr Keyes in relation to this development. Uh, it looks like a staged development and there are now that'll with this particular DA that'll make two dwellings on this on that part of the site. Uh, the access to for the second development will be through Enid Lane. I know we recently acquired Enid Lane. Is there a proportion of the lane that's being asphalted so that they can access it and who's responsible for that cost? Through Mr Mayor, the developer of this proposal has uh, agreed after some consultation with council staff to provide a seal from the Pemberton Street um, up to the entrance to their garage uh, and that will be provided at their cost. And I, I believe while we're on with that particular asphalting, we're sort of looking at, I, I know Mr Ferris indicated Early in the year, we were looking at uh, doing a lot more work and re remediating that laneway. Is that sort of, are we going to start that or is that to just the uh, length and breadth of it at this point? Uh, 
uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the works that are proposed from council side are to fix up the stormwater drainage. Yeah. Uh, and that's the only extent of works that are required in any lane at this point in time. The lane's been a private lane for a long period of time. There's no major issues with access to any of the properties, but there is a drainage issue that we're going to look to, to get involved with and, and yeah. to remedy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. On that note, I'll put the motion. All those in favour of division, we have Councillor Stutchbury, Councillor Cameron, Councillor Matt, Councillor Glacken, Councillor Fairley, Councillor Vandren. The motion is carried. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, we have 13.4. DA one zero dot two zero one eight dot three five nine five one dot one. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Glacken. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair, to move uh, the recommendation that council receive and note the contents of the report and grant consent to development application ten dot two zero one eight dot three five nine five. 1.1 for demolition, multi-dwelling housing, commercial development, shop top housing, vegetation removal, signage associated works and subdivision of lots A, B, C uh, in DP333758 and lot 2 in DP774628 addressed as 401 to 409 Keywall Street, South Albury, subject to conditions contained in the draft determination included at attachment 4 to this report. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Gluck, you start and debate on that? Uh, just very briefly. Uh, this is a um, development that has been uh, in progress uh, for some uh, considerable time now. Uh, it's a significant development uh, and has therefore required significant time to be able to progress, be progressed to this stage. The community consultation has been quite significant uh, and I believe this is a, a very positive uh, development for this area uh, and indeed for Albury as well. So I'm very happy to be removing this recommendation this evening. Thank you. Councillor Stutch, do you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you to the most relevant member of staff. Uh, reading through the documents on this DA, I was intrigued by the uh, sports ground um, latrine facilities uh, comment and I'm just wondering if we could have an expansion of that element. Mr. Keyes. Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just confirm that was latrine? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Starchbury, the original proposal when it was lodged was proposed, uh, put forward a consideration to relocate the existing toilet block uh, that services the adjacent playing fields. Uh, there's been further ne negotiation and discussion with council staff in regards to that. Uh, at this stage, that element has been removed from the DA. It's not a part of this application anymore. Uh, council hasn't consented for that to be part of the application. However, separate negotiations may continue depending on what's being proposed. Uh, one of the considerations is the benefits of having a brand new, uh, fully accessible public toilet available in this location. However, there needs to be some consultation with local sporting groups who use the facility, uh, as well as neighbouring residents. Uh, yes, so uh, through you, in some way, was the developer offering to um, uh, redevelop the toilet block facilities on the public park as part of the DA? Through you, Mr Mayor, the developer has put forward a proposal for consideration by Council to provide brand new facilities and remove the existing one from directly adjacent to the proposed boundary of the new dwellings. And that's subject to further discussion and, and consideration. Well, I guess my last question would be through you, Mr Mayor, to the most relevant member of the staff. Uh, is that not an offer too good to refuse? Mr Case. On paper it may seem so, Councillor Stutchbury, but there are considerations, particularly in relation to the use of the facility at the moment and the sporting groups that currently take advantage of it who are very happy with the location uh, and any movement or transfer of that facility needs to be taken into account uh, as well as exactly what's being provided what conditions are being proposed uh, and what standards are being put forward. So that's when I reference that there's further consideration and discussion to look at and consultation with sporting groups, that's what we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stutchbury. Uh, just one from me, Mr Keyes. In relation to the allotment of parking, and I get that the residents have got garage parking, but I see there's a significant allowance for visitor parking and I... 
for the life of me, it must be my, my eyes. I can't see where the 24 visitors allotment for parking is. It is that the ingress egress in front of the units, or yeah, uh, yeah that, that appears. And it's an extensive planning um, document as well, which is really really good with the 3D enhancement, which gave you that sort of impression. So, yeah. thank you. Okay, so on that note, there's no further debate. Councillor Glenn, did you wish to close debate? Uh, no, that's fine, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy to put that motion. A division, all those in favour? I've got Councillor Sussbury, Councillor Cameron, Councillor Mack, Councillor Glacken, Councillor Thurley and Councillor Vanderman. The motion is carried. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, okay, CM 13.5, DA 10.2018.35957.1. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that Council A receive and note the contents of the report and B, grant consent to develop application 10-2018-35957.1 for additions to and a change of use to community facility of the historic Albury Water Pump House at Part Lot 8 and Part Lot 6 in DP 1068693, addressed as 3 Boundary Road East Albury, subject to the conditions contained in the draft determination included at Attachment 5 to this report. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury? Yes, Mr Mayor, happy to second that. Councillor Thurley, you've stopped in debate. Uh, just to say that this is a wonderful opportunity to rejuvenate uh, an historic building in the city, uh, to get it um, uh, alive and active again and to really see something good happening down there. So I, I think it's just a great opportunity. Thank you. Councillor Stutchby, did you have a question you, or speak for? No, I'd, I'd like to speak for this. I think that this fulfils a number of... Uh, purposes which we should be proud of. First of all, it's providing a facility that would appear to be required, not just in the area but outside the area. And secondly, it's uh, maintaining and restoring an historic building and one would hope that there are many other historic buildings that can be maintained and preserved and provide um, function uh, for the current date. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Doxy got a question. Someone pressed his button. Okay. Councillor Thurley, no further question or debate. Did you wish to close debate? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Division? Councillor Studgeby, Councillor Cameron, Councillor Mack, Councillor Glacken, Councillor Thurley and Councillor Vanderman. The motion is carried. CM14, officers' reports for noting. CM14.1, the Two Cities, One Community Action Plan. Progress report. Thank you, Councillors. Councillor Thurley. Um, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that Council receive and note the Two Cities, One Community Action Plan progress report. Thank you. Councillor Stutchbury? Yes, Mr Mayor. I'd like to second that. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to that? Um, no, I have not much to say, just that uh, it's pleasing to note that um, the actions that are occurring as part of this uh, um, joint venture with Bodonga, it's uh, very pleasing to hear. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Uh, no further question or debate. Happy to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? The motion is carried. There are no delegates' reports for noting. Notices of urgent business, councillors. I've not been made aware of any, but are there any? Councillor Vanderman. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've been approached for the fourth time today by a member of the public uh, complaining about the fact that there are no toilet facilities at the Aldi complex in the, at the corner of uh, Young and uh, Guinea Streets. Um, and I was um, of the opinion uh, that there was no requirement for them to provide public toilets. Is that something that our council, council staff can look at uh, in future as part of uh, a development of this nature where there's a shopping complex that some sort of public toilet facilities be provided uh, because there's quite, there's about, I think, at least eight businesses there, including Aldi, um, mm. and there's no public uh, toilets on that uh, premises. Mr Case. Yeah, Mr Mayor, we'll certainly take that on notice and follow that up. Thank you, Councillor Vander. And on that note, I did raise it with Mr Keyes about the state of that corner in terms of the landscaping and the and its vista when you drive into the city, it's fairly average and I think we're addressing that, weren't we, Mr Keyes? We're chasing that one up. Thank you. Okay. 
No confidential items. Uh, complete our meeting at 6.30. Well done, councillors.